Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, I just wanted to talk about, um, you know, the women's team are already in the Champions League semi-final. You can make the men's team in it. Um, did you have a message for the women's team and and have you spoken with Emma as well uh, about her achievements in management at Chelsea? No, not yet. We were fo fo uh, totally focused on our, on our game against uh, uh, Madrid and then Fulham and now against Madrid. But of course, we followed it on, on TV and it's a big achievement. So. Uh, we are very happy because in the end it's one club and uh, it's uh, a big thing to arrive in the final. I think for the first time for the Chelsea women and uh, hopefully they can they can finish the job. Um, so big, big congratulations uh, from us. John Cross. Hi Thomas, good to see you. Um, you. You always talk in your press conferences, Thomas, enthusiastically about belief and uh, and confidence. Just how much confidence and belief will the, will the players have taken from their magnificent performance and impressive result in the first game in Madrid that they can show them that they can get this job done and can potentially won, win this competition? Yeah, the best thing is if they really feel it and, and I think they did it during the first half. I think we all together uh, felt that we can be stronger in the second half and we feel uh, now we rested some players, now we have three days in between. The challenge will be and the intention is to keep the intensity going throughout the whole match and, and play this card. Um, um, it, is, it is important, it is a semi-final, the pressure is on, it's a knockout game, it's the second leg, the decisive one. So. To arrive with a certain uh, level of belief and self-confidence is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, you have no chance to to play against a team like like Real Madrid without belief, without the inner belief. And it does not help so much if your coach is talking about it. You need to feel it. And uh, I, if I talk about it, I just talk about it because I I, I I'm sure that they feel it. And and we can we can see in all the games that, that the team is self-aware of. We are able to produce performances. We are also aware um, of the challenge that is ahead of us, but it's the best feeling is to arrive with uh, almost full squad, in good shape, um, with a good performance and an okay result in the, in the first leg. So everything is open now for the second leg. Like I said, I'm very happy that we could beat Fulham in between, so we have nothing to worry about, nothing to regret. And um, now is the moment today to enjoy training and to be ready tomorrow. Ophimatica. Unmute yourself, please, Ophimatica. Unmute yourself. Okay, where you go? Do you have a question? He cannot hear. Does he hear? <coughs> Okay, do you want to ask your question, please? No? Okay, we'll switch. We'll go to Nick Pure, please. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you could give us a, an injury update on, um, you know, on the guys who are doubtful, Tony and uh, Matteo. And um, the other day, we were talking about Christian and, and his, his number, and you said, you know, he. He chose Eden's number. He accepted Eden's number. I know you're saying he brought a little bit of focus on himself, but is that good in a way because it shows his confidence? Yeah. You know, players obviously the best players in the world they need that confidence and belief in themselves, don't they? So is it good that you know he obviously realizes his talents and yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good. It's him. yeah, absolutely. It's a good thing in in this decision to to take this number. And it uh, sets the tone, and it shows the determination and uh, and the dreams that that Christian wants to fulfill and his own demands to himself. This is a very good part of this decision. The downside of this decision is that uh, people will always uh, compare you with any number ten in the world and with the number tens in a big club like Chelsea. So this is the downside, and you have to live up uh, for it. But I. Uh, um, right now he's in a good place and he has a huge impact to our team so everything is good and uh, he can we, we are happy if he continues tomorrow to to make his mark for the injuries I can uh, I can just give you the the status right now which is that that uh, Matteo will not be in the squad 
Um, I think that uh, Tony will be play with a mask. He will play with a mask because he trained yesterday with a mask. Everybody else trained is in training today. So hopefully we will have no uh, re-injuries, no new injuries uh, from today's training. That means that everybody is available except for Mateo Kovacic. Ian Sabani. Hi Thomas, uh, wondering if uh, you think from a tactical perspective if tomorrow's game will be similar or different than the first leg. Will it be more open with Real Madrid chasing the game or do you think it will be relatively conservative? I'm, I'm not sure what, if they will uh, play again in a 5-3-2 or they switch to their more familiar 4-3-3. Um, that depends maybe also on the last test for Mendy and, and Ramos today. Um, and from this decision, things change, of course, by nature, because any formation has its, uh, its strengths and its weaknesses. It's always like this. So in the end, in a semi-final in Champions League, I believe that it's not about the formation. It's not about what we play, what uh, Real Madrid plays. It's about how we play it and uh, how means which intensity do we have, which belief do we have. Um, are, we, are we brave enough? Do we play courageous enough? Um, and do we play on our, on our top level within the formation? So it's always a tactical choice. It's always tactical, a little tactical. But for me, it's more in these, in these big games, it's more about the little decision, the, the, the individual tactic behavior, the, the, the tactical behavior within groups, within combinations. How do we end up? Can we isolate? Can we maybe isolate Real Madrid in a two against two, two against one, three against two situations? And how do we solve these situations? And can we avoid to be to be isolated in these little little situations? So, like I said, it's more about how we play than than what we play, and the same is for for Real Madrid. And as I said, as we don't know what exactly what formation they will use, we will we will fully focus on us on our performance. Ian Abrahams. Hi Thomas, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Very good. Uh, are you in your private plane or no? Say again? Are you in your private plane right now? No, just in my car. Oh, sorry. just in your car. Um, <laughs> defensively, your team have been <laughs> defensively your team have been brilliant since you arrived. Yeah. If there's one critique, it will be that they your team haven't been able to be clinical in front of goal, and especially Timo Werner. How much of a big decision is it on whether Timo plays tomorrow, and and how much have you been expressing on your team that any chances they get? They absolutely have to take. Yeah, but I believe strongly that Timo wanted himself to, to score absolutely this goal and he knows it that he had a huge one in, in Madrid. But uh, I think we all have to, to accept that sometimes uh, strikers even, even miss chances and even big chances and, and uh, this is part of the game. Um, not all decisions are made yet. We have another we have another training session right now, and it is uh, always about the last impression from the players. Do they feel confident? Do they show up today? Are they they strong in fishing, finishing today in in what they are doing? And, and don't forget, I mean, to talk about the the game and to split the game in defense and offense is a nice thing to do, but you can get easily lost if you if you want to want to cut football into separate pieces because it's a very complex sport and a very very complex game so for me timo like everybody else who plays up front have a huge intensity against the ball and have a huge part in that we are so strong uh, defensively because it's uh, a team effort how we defend and how we uh, attack so everybody is uh, needs to step up and take responsibility for for scoring and and for defending and uh, we have enough, uh, I think we, we create enough chances, we create enough touches in the box to, 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 to maybe score more goals. And uh, this will come maybe um, with time, with a little bit more experience, with adaptation, with a bit more self-confidence. I'm, I'm pretty relaxed about it um, and, and trust my players, no matter who, no matter who starts tomorrow. And, and like I said, uh, we, we do this as a team. Nobody has to do it tomorrow alone. This is the very good, uh, the very good news. We do this together. Um, and, and there are many situations to solve tomorrow. Not only, not only we should not get distracted by only thinking about who is scoring in the end. We will try to create chances. We will try to put intensity. 
and um, from there we, we trust our guys. John Southall, Five Live. Front knee, John. Still can't hear, John. Yeah, let's take that back. Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yep. Let's try again. Um, we expect Sergio Ramos to return from Real Madrid. So, what kind of difference do you think that will make to their team? And also, what lesson? What's the main lesson you learned from the first the first game? The main lesson is that, that we can trust ourselves and uh, the main lesson is that, that we have all the right to be in semi-final and uh, have, uh, we should be self-confident, have absolutely no fear to face this challenge because we deserve to be there and we can perform again on, on, on this level. This is the main lesson. Um, does Ramos play or not? Well, this is a... <laughs> this is a this is a tough question because I, I simply don't know it. We will see after after the training today and and when they give a, the lineup tomorrow. Does it change for for Real Madrid? Yes, a lot because it's the captain, it's the it's the it's the captain of the most successful uh, team in Europe in the last year. So yeah, it changes it changes a lot, but uh, we cannot get uh, we cannot lose our heads about about this decision. Um, I think that he will start. We will prepare for that, and uh, we have to make sure that he cannot do it alone. Paul Gilmore, Sky Sports News. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Uh, things have been obviously going very well for you. Have you now begun talks with the club over a new contract or a con extending your contract? No, no, no. There's no time. There's no need and no time for this right now. Diego Plaza. Muy buenas tardes, Tomás. Eh, Diego Plaza. Hola, coach. What kind of match are you expecting tomorrow? Obviously, Madrid need to come out to score. Do you think you're going to try and go out and score goals or are you going to protect yourself a little bit more in defence? For me, the challenge is to forget the result. For me, the challenge is always in, in a two-leg the games that you forget the first result and you go on uh, and, and you start new at 0-0. Zero, zero. And we will clearly prepare the match to win the match, nothing else. We have no other way to prepare matches. I don't know any other way to prepare a match than to encourage my team to go out and try to win it, to be our best. And if we want to, if, if, we, if we are in our best, we it's it's a, it's a non-brainer that we go for a win against we want to win games this is this club is about winning this this uh, this game is about winning this competition is about winning we're in semi-final second leg forget the first result uh, it's not as important as any anybody out there thinks and it has n zero importance in a preparation of a match zero for me it changes absolutely nothing how we how we how we start the match tomorrow how we prepare it today and what we do in training and and what we uh, and it has zero influence in, in the talk that we give to our players we will encourage them we will demand from them and we will be strong there tomorrow eight o'clock as a group as one club with one uh, big goal to to overcome real madrid and this will only happen if we 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 bring our best level to the pitch and and the best level means that we fight to win it matt law Hi Thomas. Hi. Um, a couple on N'Golo, if, if you don't mind, he was outstanding in the first leg of, of this tie. Yeah. Um, he's won the World Cup, the Premier League title, the FA Cup, the Europa League. I was wondering what you thought a, a Champions League winner's medal would do for his career. Would it elevate it even higher or, or has he already reached those heights? Where, where, to, where to elevate? I mean, the guy is it's the top guy. And he is the he is the guy you need to win trophies, obviously, and that's why we are so so happy that he's here and uh, that he's in our club. I was uh, dreaming about this player, fighting for this player, dreaming about this player in in any club I was coaching. So now he's my player, and um, as you mentioned it, he won any trophy except for Champions League. Uh, hopefully, he will do everything that that uh, that we get this this trophy, and. Uh, for me, he's an example, and he's a, he's a, he's an unbelievable uh, input 
for any team in the world and we are so so happy that he he plays for us he is key and he will be key tomorrow and i hope in the best way possible and secondly i, I just wanted to quickly ask you about his character because from the outside he, he can be quite hard to read i wonder if he's hard for you to read because he's on his own quite a lot when we see him and you try to give him a cuddle after newcastle and he, he didn't really look like he liked to cuddle i wonder what he's like <laughs> yeah but Still he, needs to, still he needs to accept that I cuddle him. I do this a lot, so I need it for myself, so he has to, he has to live with it. Now he's a nice guy and he's a, like almost, I would say, a shy person. And he likes to be on, he likes to be, he is quiet. He likes to have his own quality time and, and it's not, he's not loud. But he, I see him smile a lot. I see him interact with anybody, but on his own terms and, and, uh, I'm very shy, very polite, so I'm super happy. I'm, I'm so happy that, that these players like, like him exist and, and to express yourself by pure, by pure performance is, is, a, is, a, is a pleasure to watch. And um, what he is doing with this mentality is the mentality of a, of a real helper uh, that will always give anything to, to, to help everybody on the pitch out there and being such a nice, humble and, and quiet guy is a fantastic combination. Miguel de Lange. Hi Thomas, good afternoon. Um, just Chelsea used to be a club, well they are a club that have had a, a very uh, distinctive relationship with the Champions League. Like before 2012, it was seen as a holy grail. And, and th this season has been quite different in that suddenly it's, it's gradually happened that you're in real contention. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that at all or felt the kind of the club's um, you know, mythology or history with the competition? I've, I never felt like that this competition is our holy grail since I arrived. It is a competition. What I felt when I came to the club that it's a very competitive club, that it is about winning in this club and this sharpens the, the, the atmosphere and this has a huge impact on the atmosphere here around in Cobham in the club in training ground towards everybody because uh, it's, uh, it, it does something to you and you instantly feel it but more in the way that we are very very competitive and the club is very competitive and very serious about any competition and about any game this is what I like a lot. Uh, I never felt it that we have here a holy grail to reach and that anybody uh, that, that uh, winning the Champions League is the very most important, maybe the only target that really, that really counts. And the opposite, I have the strong feeling that any, any, any win counts and, and that we demand and the club demands of, of his team and, and we, uh, from me as a coach, that we win any game, no matter who's on the other side of the pitch and that we arrive in games and in, in no matter in which competition, ready to win and ready to deliver performance. And this is what sharpens a certain mentality. And this is what I feel uh, as our big strength, that we arrive as a team tomorrow that is used to to this, um, to this pressure, to this tension, and to this, um, um, to this amount of, of belief and, and determination to win games, um, and this is a good this is a good pressure because if you if you make things too big, it, it does not help nobody, and it devalues it devalues your performance in any other game. So why should it be like this? We know ourselves that is a, a huge opportunity tomorrow and uh, we know ourselves how hard it is to arrive in, in, in semi-final and you can be very sure that we will give everything to, to make it through final. Okay, last two questions, Victoire and then and Dylan to finish. Victoire. Hi Thomas. Hi. Um, I know you said that um, you have not finished the, the list yet, but are you planning more or less to have the same starting lineup as last week, or are you tempted to start with a different combination, especially in the front or midfield? Zinedine Zidane in your office right now, next to you, or no? <laughs> no, I will not. I cannot. I'm, I'm so sorry. I would like to help you with your question, but I will not. I will not give any hint. I will like hold it back until tomorrow. And, and make my decisions very late, um, like, like I usually do. I have my ideas in, in my mind, um, but I'm, I'm too long in the, in the business that I all also know that anything can happen in the last training, that um, any, uh, any situation can even change my mind. And uh, we need to wait. I need another sleep and tomorrow I will I will uh, decide for the lineup, uh, uh, lineup and give it to my team first. 
um, this is this is the way it is but but uh, what is sure that we played a good match in the lineup that we had and there's from 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 performance from the view of performance there's no reason to to do uh, too many changes last question for Thomas Andy Dillon hi Thomas hi oh yeah um, I, I'm led to believe that you've um, relaxed rules quite a lot um, since you took over uh, particularly for home games your, you, you let your squad stay at home rather than go to a hotel so I'm just wondering with this being such a key game are you sticking to that plan or are you are you making them go to a hotel and I just wondered what your thinking is about that good question we 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 decided more or less week from week and from game to game so in the moment I had the, we had the feeling that today afternoon training is is a, is a good moment to prepare the match because it's a late match tomorrow and to let the players sleep at home and not go to the hotel so we will meet for lunch because that um, that gives us another seven hours seven and a half hours together in the hotel this is enough time for me to do meetings to have um, um, several hours of rest again so say somebody had maybe a a bad night or, or does not feel um, did not sleep good because uh, whatever so it's still still a lot of time to to recover so once we have this in a season of 60 almost 60 matches uh, if we have and and sleeping so much uh, also away from home and being so much in hotels we try to reduce the time but anything has an influence on it. Sometimes, like like now, we had three days in between, so we had a lot of time to also do recovery and and take our time here at Cobham, to to use the physios, to use the get massages. Sometimes even this has an influence. If we have only two days in between, we prefer sometimes to go to a hotel, that the players can take their time in the evening to get massages, to get uh, treatment uh, for their little injuries or and. And this, this is basically the way how we decided. When there are evening games, normally uh, I had the feeling that it will maybe increase the tension uh, if, we, if we go to the hotel in the, in the evening today. So let them go home, let them be a bit distracted and we meet tomorrow for, for, for a walk and lunch and a meeting. And we still have seven hours to be well prepared.